Football League on EA Sports. But tonight we've got a preseason matchup as it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Charles Davis, happy to be back alongside you. And I'll tell you what, yes, it's just week two of the preseason, but now they've got one game under their belts and a lot of guys trying to prove some stuff down on the field here today. Not only that, these coaches like to win. And I used to think it really didn't matter who won in the preseason. Then I watched some of those shows that the NFL does, and you see the coaches in preseason after a loss jumping all over their guys. So I learned one valuable lesson. Wins and losses count no matter what time of year it is. And the Bengals now set for their first possession, and it's pro bowler Joe Burrow who leads this offense in his fourth season now out of LSU. Burrow may be young in his career, but he's helming the Bengals to one of the best stretches they've ever seen. 12 wins last year, which matched the team record, and they made the conference championship game in back-to-back -back seasons for the first time ever. At the center of it all is the man they call Joey B. 35 touchdown passes last year and almost 4,500 yards. to the air is Burrow. Man open, that's Jamar Chase complete. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Just like that, a pickup of 20 on their first play from scrimmage. His first pass attempt of the game, Charles, and the pass rush was right there to hit him. But no fear, he delivered an accurate ball. Nice catch. And you never want to see your quarterback getting hit but it also sends a message to the rest of the team when he's able to take that shot and still deliver downfield. Showing a little toughness, and the team rallies around him. This could really help them on their drive. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Big 13. Big 13. Now it's Burrow. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Brady Jarrett just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. Well, we're trying to set up a screen there, but that one just too slow in developing. Yeah, too slow in developing and well read because that ends up being a bad feeling for the quarterback. When well, he's got no blocking in front of him, his guys are just going to let defenders go, and they're coming for him. So if it's not there, you just got to throw the ball on the turf at your running back's feet. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Now a three-time 1,000-yard rusher, Joe Mixon. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. 
Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. A tough spot here, third and 15. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. So pass interference to call, that's going to set him up with a first down. And if it's a bang-bang play, maybe the flag stays in the official's pocket, but instead, he definitely impeded the receiver's right to catch the football. The official's letting the players know how the game's going to be called here in the first quarter. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Again, it's Mixon. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. So back-to-back -back big runs picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the <laughs> era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. And they didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. to his left. Catch is made here by Irv Smith Jr. And they are able to stop it, but he does take it all the way to the two. A good pickup there, 21 yards. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical, they've been crisp, and as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Mixon is into the end zone for a Bengal touchdown. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal, they've got to like the way that they started this ball game. Evan McPherson now for the PAT. He's got it to make it 7 nothing Bengals. So this drive spans seven plays, and it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Falcons ready to go to work here on offense, and at the helm in his second season, Charles, it's Desmond Ritter. The Falcons got their feet wet with Ritter during a four-game audition last season, and he did end their year with a pair of wins. Optimism reigns that he is their quarterback of the future.
Falcons first and 10 here as Ritter gets them ready at their own 28-yard line. Now the first running back taken back in April, the former Longhorn, B. John Robinson. Tackle made that time by B.J. Hill. Got it here at the 29 on second and eight. Working from the gun, Ritter. This one complete to Scott Miller. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. Ten yards there and a first down for the Falcons. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. Ritter looking to throw on first and 10. It's a gain of 11, and the Falcons pick up the first. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that'll pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards it. Ritter from the gun. A quick throw there is incomplete. You know, during these preseason games, we're in week two right now. It's always funny looking at our spot charts up here in the booth because with all the guys that might play in this one, it seems to get bigger and bigger each year. Yeah, we pretty much supersize them, don't we? Because, you, you know, remember, they're carrying 90 now. And with the new rules, they'll carry 90 all the way through the preseason. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Cheetah Bay Awuzie with a pick. And the Bengals are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. Well, your first drive of the first quarter, you get it down there, try to fire it in the end zone, and big-time deflation on that play. No doubt about it. They're moving and grooving and getting into position, and this is not the ending that they saw on this drive, is it? They had things going their way. On first and ten, Joe Burrow. That will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Uh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. Again, it's Burrow on second and ten. This goes out wide for Mixon. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. They'll come up now third and three. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. 41 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's given us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Here we go. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. Can, can. Can, can. <laughs> they'll stay on the ground, mix it again. And they'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 18 yards on that one, and the Bengals are moving. First down. Well, they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, say, as you said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. Here we go. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Throw. 
That one taken in by T. Higgins. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. And he's brought down at the 19 after a gain of 19. First down in the red zone. One thing's for sure, this defense has to figure out how to stop the ground game. He's eating him up here in the first quarter. It looks like they have to go to different forces, aren't they? The conventional things aren't working too well. So I remember a coach of mine saying way back when, when a back's having a great game, you've got to get the ball out of his hands. See how far he can run without the ball. And what he meant was takeaways, knock it loose, because maybe you can't just stop him with just regular tackling. Mixon with a first down carry. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Now it's Burrow. Flush to his right. To Mixon on the check down. And the Bengals are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. Here we go, here we go. Burrow looking to pass. And that'll be caught. Touchdown, Bengals. It's Tyler Boyd. It's a six-yard touchdown pass, and the Bengals are off to a 13-0 first quarter lead. They've got to be thrilled on the road right now. Touchdown, turnover, touchdown, and quickly trying to make it 14-0. Yeah, and mentioned it already. On the road, to be able to go into someone else's house and establish a start like that, obviously your confidence rises in a big way, and you're putting some doubt in their minds. Extra point by McPherson, up and good, and it's now 14 to nothing. So that drive goes a full 80 yards and 10 plays, and it's finished off by the touchdown from Tyler Boyd. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. Charles, it's kind of gut check time. Look, I know it's early first quarter, just their second drive of the game, but they've already thrown the interception, given up the score. You're down double digits. They got to figure out something and pretty quickly here. No doubt about it. And when we look at that sideline, I'm sure you're observing the same thing I am. I don't like the body language at all. They look like they're in a state of stunned disbelief. So to me, we always talk about someone stepping up and making a big play. I think it would behoove them if multiple guys step up and make big plays right now. They need something positive to happen, and they need for it to happen now. So following the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 25. Ritter will set up to throw it. Open man is Kyle Pitts, his tight end. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. 
Robinson will try to pick it up. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 14 yards there and a Falcon first down. When you're down early, how do you get back in the game, maybe establish the run? I think they're trying to do that. I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offense coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. First and ten. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Picked by Logan Wilson, and he's just across midfield and down at the 49-yard line. Well, they're certainly not giving much help to their defense, are they? Because for the second time now, that D has had to run back out on the field early after an interception. And remember, on the last drive, the opposing side took it in for six after that interception. down. Quick slam caught by Chase. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Line of scrimmage, the 24. This is second and six. Again, it's Mixon. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Here's third and three. Inside handoff to Mixon, and he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. 14-0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. to pick up about four at second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. And now the first throw for the backup quarterback. He's got Smith here. And he's brought down, but he has it down to the 12 on a pickup of 12, first and 10. something else now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts they'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter from down at the 12 it's first and 10 
Browning. Throw left side complete to Chase. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Well, that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go, and it's going to bring up a third down. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. To throw Browning. Now a battle for the football. It's caught. It's a touchdown. Jamar Chase from three yards out. And the Bengals have moved out in front by three touchdowns. So, Charles, that's three touchdowns on three drives, and it's just been an offensive barrage so far. Great word, partner, using barrage right there. I'm going to add another word, if you don't mind. How about perfection? No surprise that they're leading right now. Absolute dominance throughout this ball game, and no signs of slowing down. McPherson now for the extra point. And it is now 21 to nothing. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it was Jamar Chase who finished it off with a touchdown reception. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. Here comes the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here. And it's been a miserable start for them offensively, obviously. Two drives, two interceptions. And this is where you have to know your quarterback and know how you actually have to reach him. Do you do it with a little bit of humor? Maybe you break the ice a little bit like, hey, didn't we practice in that color jersey all week, not the one that you're throwing it to? Or maybe you have to be stern with him. But whatever it's going to take to get the message, it has to be done. He's putting the game in jeopardy. And they're able to get this one across the 35. And now we'll get a stoppage here. There appears to be an injured Falcon on the field. Well, injury's never good, especially here in the preseason. Hopefully nothing serious. They'll take a look at him, and we'll step aside for a moment. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Ritter. He's got his pass catching tight end. That's Pitts. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Back to back good plays. Have him on the move on first down. A give left side to Robinson. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45 yard line. Play three of the drive, not as successful. They go backwards after those two first down gains. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Out of the gun, here's Ritter. He'll find Miller, that's complete. So the completion good for seven there. And now third down and six to go. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Ritter throwing on third down. Uh, he had a man open. 
open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Like what I see so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only allowed one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. There's a look at receiver Jamar Chase as the Bengals get set to go on offense. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on a drive you're like, oh, he got the best of us? I'm not sure there's a number, but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. <laughs> Especially with a touchdown. Yes. You're way, never happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that at the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away from him? Because I'm not sure the other guys can make those sort of plays. So let's make sure that we don't let him get going again. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. And after the loss to start out, here's second and 11. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Nixon. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. 106 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. And the Bengals on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This time they face a third and two. They'll try and run for it with Evans. And they needed two. They could only get one. Fourth down. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. And how about this one now? In their own territory, a gutsy call. They're going to go for this on fourth and a yard. And he'll run for it with Evans. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. A big roll of the dice on fourth and one, but it pays off. They convert. So he needed one. He ended up getting three. And I really like the way he ran that one, too. That's really intelligent running because oftentimes a running back could get too greedy. Try and hit the home run on a play where you just need a few yards. Well done there, making sure he got the first down and not worrying about trying to get a touchdown. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. So it goes as a completed pass, but they lose a full five yards. Got to give some credit there defensively. They snuffed out that screen early on first down. Really read it well, didn't they? Because they didn't bring the pressure that they expected. They covered all the passing lanes. So once you see it break down as the passer, I think in this situation, you're throwing it at the feet of your back to make sure no one picks it off, or you throw it away, throw it over the sideline. Don't try and freelance and try and make a bigger play. There's really no one else running a pattern that should be over. Open. Here's Browning. This pass complete to Higgins. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really that's really a whole lot cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. And let's see who's faster. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Starting to rack up the yardage here in this first half. Five catches now and a first down. Well, things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick it down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 43. They'll look to throw again. 
short throw to Smith. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 11 more on that one and another first down. Let's just call it what it is. This has been a flat-out struggle for this defense all game long. They've really had a hard time slowing them down. And while I'm not big on speeches and guys jumping up and down, they might need their team leader on defense to get in their face right now and light a fire under these guys. They've got to start playing better assignment football and start getting guys on the ground. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. On second down, a run with Evans. And he'll head out of bounds inside the 10, mark him down at the 9. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. This offense continues to be a hot knife through butter. Three drives, three scores, and knocking on the door again on drive number four. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Mixing up the middle. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. What an excellent defensive stand there in the red zone. Nice tight coverage. They certainly recognized how important it was to bring up fourth down here. McPherson's kick is good, and the route is on. It's 24 to nothing. So everything else has gone right in this first half. Kind of follows that it would for their kicker, too, as he adds three more onto the lead. Yeah, and the way that this one's gone, definitely not looking like he's going to have to worry too much about pressure kicks late in the game. He can go out there free and easy, just work on his form, and he knocked that one through. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Falcons ready to take over. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. No, but well, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's, that's not a good combination. I think you just you called it. I think you just called a desperation time. I think <laughs> yeah. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy. Two yards the loss, second and twelve. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Ritter now. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts. That's their second, so they'll have one remaining here in this second quarter. We'll be right back. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Ritter. Throw over the middle, going to be caught here by Pitts. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. 
Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Bengals take over first and 10. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout. And with that, they're now out of timeouts and still plenty of time remaining here in this second quarter. Throwing to start the drive. Browning flushed out right. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. Now a second and ten. Throwing again. Browning. Open man is Higgins. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. Second quarter action with 1.59 remaining. Throwing on first down, Browning. And he floats one there, incomplete. So now here in the second week of the preseason, you'd expect the starters play a little bit more than they did in week one, but not a whole lot. So if you're an offensive coordinator, what are you looking for? What you're looking for is things getting cleaned up as you go along because most of your playbook's probably installed. How well are they handling it? Easy in and out of the pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. They need 18 yards here on third down. Back to throw. Browning. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. So on fourth down, on is Brad Robbins to punt for the Bengals. Cordero Patterson deep for Atlanta. Now he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. A nice punt, but a good run back as well, 13 yards. And it will be Falcon football. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul-searching now? I would say so. And they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on yeah, the field a lot position. more than normal, put them in some tough spots. But what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. Now they got to get to the line quickly. On second down, Ritter. Short throw caught by Pitts. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. A six-yard pass on back-to-back -back plays. Picks up the first. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he is going to lose yardage here. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackled him for a loss. Ready, set. 13 yards remaining on second down. Back to throw, Ritter. He's got the hookup to Miller. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. 
as long as you go through your proper reads and progressions, the drag route can be one of those old reliable plays because usually it's good for a good chunk of yardage as we just saw there. And those guys like it, right? They can get the ball with a full head of steam. Especially against man coverage because man coverage, they're typically running away from someone and not worried about traffic coming out on the other end. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Ritter here on third and two. Now throw right side here, going to be incomplete. And that'll bring up fourth down as his Cincy defense stands up on third. As we thought they might do here in week two of the preseason, they've left their starting quarterback out there for this second quarter. But I would imagine we will not see him after halftime. Yeah, this is the time of year you've got to get your backup some reps and make sure you protect your starting quarterback. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And the deficit will stay at three scores. The Bengal offense going to see the ball one more time in this first half. And they do have terrific starting field position, but no timeouts to work with, so they'll need to operate quickly. And now two problems as I see it. First, you missed the kick, which granted was a long one. But second, you set the other guys up a great field position and enough time to maybe get downfield and get a field goal attempt of their own. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Evans gets it again on second down. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. So we've come to halftime after a very one-sided beginning to this one. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in just a minute. Week two of the preseason is upon us. Each team now with just one more game after this one. And then we will get it all started as we normally do on the first Thursday after Labor Day. In right, our coach, game, still a lot to keep an eye on. Guys back battling, to quarter, trying to make a ball three. club. We'll send it back to two guys already on our team. That's Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Expect to see a good number of backups going forward as we are back and underway here in preseason week two. And no fireworks to start the half. This will be a touchback. The Falcons offense ready to get going to begin this third quarter. And that first half, one to forget really on both sides of the ball. They got to find some way to string something together here, don't they? Yeah, they're down big right now. So as you mentioned, trying to find something to string together, get some consistency, something sustained, maybe calm their whole team down and find a way to get back in this one. Yeah, because right now you're down big, you're being shut out. Let's see if this is the drive that kind of kickstarts them. Credit that to the former Texas Longhorn, Joseph Osai, who got in there. If you want a lesson on how to defeat an offensive tackle, that was pretty textbook. Is that a clip and save? Is yes. that, that's what's going to go around the league, and people are going to watch that and say, my goodness, that's how you do it. And I feel awful for the offensive tackle because we always talk about the athleticism of that guy who just beat him. Well, you have to be athletic to try and block that guy. Just in this case, the defense won. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18 to throw is Heineke. That's thrown underneath Algier. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Heineke. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. 
Ah, just more frustration here offensively, and you can see it in their play and now in their body language. You know they were hoping to put a drive together to begin this third quarter, but it's just not clicking right now. And it's going to be a quick call to the punt team. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. On the return is Williams. A nice return that time gets 12 yards back. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. Simeon on first down. Eluding the pressure right. And that's complete to the tight end, Devin Asiasi. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Evans running behind center. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. From the 41, here's a second and eight. They'll stay on the ground. Evans again. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. 52 yards rushing for him now to this point. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. They'll try and run for this with Evans. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. First and 10, it's Evans. And they nearly sprung him that time as he takes this all the way down to the 37. 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. And now they'll shift things around. Play action, it's Simeon. Rush coming and he's taken down. Zach Harrison from his outside linebacker spot, forcing the sack for a loss of eight. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. They'll fake it. Now Simeon. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. That's caught over the middle by Asiasi. 
14 yards is the pick up there, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. I think that we all figured when he caught it that short of the marker that the defense almost relaxed and said, we got this covered, and then all of a sudden, space to run after the catch, and now they're screaming, somebody get him down. Fortunately, they got to him and forced the fourth down. So on fourth down, on is Evan McPherson in the Bengal field goal unit. He hit his first. Now this one from 48 yards away. McPherson's kick is good. And the lead increases even further. It's 27 to nothing now. I got to think at this point, third quarter, if you're able to hold on to the ball, get three at the end, that's all you're looking for. I would agree with that because right now, this is a job well done by them. In fact, it's almost time for handshakes, a little dap on the sidelines, maybe even start to discuss post-game plans. And for the guys who haven't played yet, go ahead and get loose. Your time is now. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, let's just say it's been unusual. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Now Heineke. That's caught. It's Frank Darby. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. First target, first catch, and a first down. Well, maybe this offense has learned something from watching their counterparts work. I'm wondering if their coaching staff said, let's do what they've been doing the entire game because that's worked well. This offense, they have not looked particularly good all game long. But a nice throw there for a good game and a first down. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. Just what they need a lecture from me, but subpar offense is what helped get them into this spot. And now they're continuing the trend with incompletions. That won't get them out of it if they don't change something soon. On second down, a run with Patterson. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Third down and one. They'll run with Patterson. Uh-uh, he is going nowhere as he is enveloped behind the line. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively, and it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the uh, field. I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling it. I say go for it. Here's Bradley Pinion now. 
as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game. But this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football. Because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. First down, Simeon. Steps away to his left. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Straight ahead, it's Evans. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. 71 yards on the ground for Evans is that last run of first down. Well, you know they had a third down play on standby just in case, but he says no need with that carry. Runs like that will continually earn him more work in this and future contests. They'll go right back to Evans here on first down. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. And they'll go right back to Evans. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Here we go, get off the field. On second down, Evans looking for space. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient. Followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. They run with a rookie. It's Chase Brown. And he's over midfield and into Falcon territory. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Back to throw, Simeon. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain, so when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. From the gun, it's a run by Evans. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. That good for 22 and a first down. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the red zone now, Simeon flush to his right. Throws right side, and that's complete. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds.
One of the tight ends comes in motion. Evans. A pickup of four on first down. It'll be second and goal. They're mounting a nice drive here. Good chunk of yardage there again. Whole line, they've been solid this drive. They have that look about them right now that says, if you do anything but run the ball behind us, you're crazy. They have really moved it well on this drive, and they want to finish it off the same way. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They lost four there, and it's third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more preseason football on EA Sports. Third and goal as they look to pour some more salt in the wound. 47 is the mic. 47 is the mic. Now Simeon. He's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. Stanley Morgan from four yards out. And the Bengals go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, yeah, I give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. You got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. First down, Heineke. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. Throwing again, Heineke on second and 10. Short throw to Smith. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Third and short yardage. Heineke steps away. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Multiple players getting home there, and it's a loss of two on the sack. Well, I wish the staff luck as they try to find positives about this performance by their offense as we move through the early part of the fourth quarter. That sack, the latest example. Down by a boatload, this offense simply can't keep up, and the quarterback is still taking hits. I'd get the backups in there if it were me. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. 
Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. The offense staying out there. They look prepared to go here on fourth and ten. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Falcons go for it, but it doesn't work out. And the Bengals are going to get it back in terrific field position. Well, that's another mistake there on the drop pass on fourth. And we've seen them do things like this all game. It's not hard to figure out why they're down by that deficit. They haven't made plays that are going to keep them in the game or win the game all game long. That's another example right there. It all boils down at the end of it to execution. Either you make the play or you don't. They'll run on first down with Evans. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And hold on here because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, you hate to see this before the regular season even begins. And we'll take a break and come back. More preseason action in a moment. The ball resting on the 20. Here's second and six. They'll go again here with Evans. A gain of four on the play, and it'll be third down. Back-to-back four-yard runs. Now look, if they just do that all the way down, field ball ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. On third down, it's Evans. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Here's a handoff to Evans out of the gun. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's OK. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. And they'll come up second and seven. A give up the middle to Evans. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Nine yards on the play there, and it'll set him up first and goal. Brendan, every great running backs coach that I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about run them into submission, uh, hasn't he? You took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. Brown. No signal. And now they say he did not get in. He is stonewalled at the one. Another shot from the one on second and goal. The carry here for the big tight end. And he takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. Drew Sample taking it in from a yard out. And the Bengals add another six points to what's going to be a blowout victory. Well, when coaches come into a game preaching total team effort, CD, I think this is the type of ball game that they're dreaming of. It was pretty apparent early on that they were clicking in all three phases. It's, it's been fun to watch. Yeah, sometimes in the NFL, you end up with matchups like we've been watching here. And when you go back to the early drives, 
you can just see that one squad was on a different level in this game. Safe to say, we have been disappointed in watching their execution throughout this contest. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Well, I hate to say it, but at this point, I don't really know that they're playing to win with this deficit in the fourth quarter. They're just trying to erase that zero on the scoreboard, Charles, and get some type of momentum to carry into the film session tomorrow. If you get any type of points on the board, it'll count as a moral victory, although no one will talk about that in the post-game press conference. That's not something you mentioned in the NFL. And this loss, it already stings and will for a while, but everyone on that offense knows it'll sting a lot worse if they don't put some points up on the board. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Throwing, Heineke. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Hart. Now he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. 33 yards that time. At this stage, there's nothing left to do but to keep firing. And if you're a play caller, you may go off your sheet and use some things maybe you hadn't planned to in this game. Maybe that was one of them there that worked. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. Here's Heineke. Setting up the screen. Here's Algier. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. Good call there on first down. And Brandon, I'm getting better over the years and not screaming out, screen, screen, screen with my defensive trading. They want to keep those pass rushers honest. And they did so there. And they wind up picking up positive yardage. Heineke again. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. The Falcons on third down. Just one conversion and eight tries. Not good. Here it's third and three. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 19. It's a 10-yard pickup, and that's enough to move the chains. Now, this is certainly one of the bigger losses that we are going to see for quite some time. And you have to think at this point where we're at in the fourth quarter with how wide this advantage is. For this offense, they're just trying to end things with a positive drive and then get the heck out of here. Yeah, if this had been a concert, you would have heard plenty of sour notes in this one. But they certainly don't want to end it on one. They want to put together a few more throws like that and at least have a final drive to give them a little bit more hope as they move forward. Heineke's throw there, taken in by Smith. Two yards on the pickup there, and it's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. One of only two rookies to top 1,000 yards on the ground last year. Here's Tyler Algier. It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third and two situation. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Heineke to throw it. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Multiple players getting home there, and it's a loss of two on the sack. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Fourth down, and the attention turns to Falcon kicker Young Way Koo. This will be spotted at the 20, so it's a 30 yard attempt. Koo knocks this one through the post, and they'll get back three, but this remains a large deficit. Well, 
it's a Pyrrhic victory at best, but Charles, no team wants to get shut out, so it's hard to blame him for taking the three there. You can't blame him one bit. It hasn't been the best performance, that's for darn sure. But there is something to be said for fighting to avoid the goose egg, and they're at least trying to finish out strong. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. You just kind of feel for the defense right now. This deficit, they have not been able to stop them the entire game, Charles. And some hands on hips, some long faces out there on the defense. forward for about three at second down. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Second and seven operating from the 34. Again a run with Evans. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. That he's brought down short. Two yards there, needed four. Well, now, after all of this, hang on here because he appears to be shaken up. Well, injury's never good, especially here in the preseason. Hopefully nothing serious. They'll take a look at him, and we'll step aside for a moment. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. And from that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five, superb. Beginning on the ground with Patterson. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. Trying to find some space to operate, and now they'll have it. A gain of 12, a big first down to get away from the end zone. I guess it's good we can't really read the mind of the defensive coordinator now, huh? Had him pinned back there deep, give up that run. Can't be happy. Yeah, whatever was whatever is in his mind right now, we probably couldn't say over the air. So a little breathing room now. First and 10 at the 17. Heineke. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Terrell Basham in there to get him. It's a loss of five. But when this game is done, the credit will go to the consistent pressure on the quarterback as a huge cause of this win. Most teams are happy if they get a few of these games per year. You know they're going to watch this tape over and over, try to identify what's working, and keep it going. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Looking to throw, Heineke. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. On third down, Heineke. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. 
So no sack. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, but it will still bring up a fourth down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. They come up on a fourth down situation with things not looking particularly rosy. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And out will come the offense as they take over. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. Take a knee. in prime time this offense they gave the nation quite a show putting up that many points to come away with what will certainly be a memorable win for them and Brandon I think it's as simple as this some players some teams they're just meant for the big stage and when they get a chance to play in this type of atmosphere where all eyes are on them and all the lights are shining brightly they show up and they show out That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say good night, everybody.